The championship never fails to disappoint and what a night of action we had last night in the EFL with serious consequences at the top end of the championship with both Leicester and Leeds dropping points. This is the current state of play at the top end of the table and with Southampton beating Coventry as well, do you know what? They're not completely dead and buried in terms of this automatic promotion race. They have been brought back into things with how last night unfolded. Now obviously we've got a big game going on in the championship tonight night as well as Ipswich take on Watford. If Ipswich do manage to get through that fixture with all three points, they will go back to the top of the championship on 90 points. They'll have a two-point lead over Leicester and a three-point lead over Leeds going into their final four matches of the season, which could be absolutely huge. In today's video, we're going to be taking a closer look at the top end of the championship, assessing each of those sides and their promotion credentials and how much last night could have damaged the likes of Leicester and Leeds in their final few matches. We'll start out with the Foxes because that was quite a shock defeat they suffered last night at Millwall. I have to admit, going into that fixture, I was fancying Enzo Maresca's side for all three points, especially with how Millwall had been playing in their previous games leading up to that fixture against the Foxes. They'd lost against Rotherham and Huddersfield in quite disappointing fashion, but that's the craziness of the championship, I suppose, and why we all love it so much that they managed to get the better of Leicester in that game. In terms of what it does for Leicester in the promotion running, I think it massively emphasises the pressure on their game against Plymouth, which is coming up on Friday. Quite a short turnaround to that game. Once again, the fixture which Leicester will be going into as the overwhelming favourites, but it's worth flagging up that on the road, Leicester have been a bit shoddy recently. While they have rectified their home form, they've had back-to-back -back wins at the King Power with victories against Norwich and Birmingham. Away from home has been a real sticking point for Leicester of late. They've only won one of their last five away matches, and that could be what costs them come the end of the season. Now, what Leicester will be a fan of is the fact that three of their remaining five matches are at home, and you would expect Leicester to have a bit more confidence going into those fixtures because of that. But looking at their remaining matches, do you know what? There aren't any easy games in there for Leicester. Plymouth are going to be scrapping for their lives on Friday night. They've then got three really tough looking matches against West Brom, Southampton and Preston before finishing the season at home against Blackburn. Now we've said it for quite a while that all the teams, especially the top four at the top of the championship, have been so relentless all season. But looking at Leicester's remaining matches there, I think they drop points in at least two of those matches. So that will give a little bit of confidence to their promotion rivals. But once we look at their fixtures as well, I also think there's a few slips coming with those games as well. So for me personally, I don't think any side is going to be flawless between now and the end of the season and win all of their remaining matches. I think there's a slip somewhere in there from all of them. But I have to admit, I didn't think that slip for Leicester would be last night. And that does throw the cat amongst the pigeons somewhat. Next then, let's speak about Leeds United and that goal draw against Sunderland last night. Leicester somewhat let off the hook by their loss against Millwall just by the fact that Leeds also dropped points and for the time being the Foxes do maintain that spot at the top of the championship. A real frustrating night at Ellen Road. Leeds were the favourites going into this fixture against Sunderland mostly because of how good they've been at Ellen Road this season. They had that slip on the road against Coventry last time but most of us assume they get back to winning ways in this one but credit to the Black Cats they made this one quite difficult for Leeds a well regimented and battered in performance where they didn't see that much of the ball but still managed to frustrate Leeds all the same. Leeds having 70% possession but just one shot on target in 90 minutes. Now what Leeds and what they'll rightly point to in this match is some of the key decisions which didn't go their way. On another night with another referee, Leeds get at a bare minimum one penalty from that match and while that may have been a bit of a get out of jail card for Leeds because they definitely weren't at their best in this fixture, those key decisions can absolutely make all the difference come the end of the season and if Leeds do miss out on automatic promotion by one or two points, this could be the fixture that they look back on and think... Man, if only that decision had gone their way. In saying all of that, the overall performance from Leeds was a little bit underwhelming. It means that's now just five points taken from the last 12 available. Now, I do think it's hard to go too harsh on Leeds right now because their overall run during this calendar year has been 
absolutely brilliant and I think everyone expected a slip to come at some stage of the season. For the case of Leeds, it's just a question of how long this slip actually lasts for and whether they can get themselves out of a rut before Leicester can. In terms of the remaining matches for Leeds, it's also not going to be a walk in the park. Four games left against Blackburn, Middlesbrough, QPR and Southampton. What I find really interesting is how much of an impact Blackburn are actually going to have on this automatic promotion race. And while Leeds will be the favourites going into that game against Rovers, I don't think it's a foregone conclusion that they'll pick up all three points in that match. Let's not forget, Blackburn, only a few weeks ago, gave Ipswich a really good run for their money and probably deserved a point from that game on the balance of play. They frustrated Southampton as well, getting a goalless draw in that game. And they've still got games to come against Leeds and Leicester as well. So how Blackburn turn up in those two matches is could have a decisive role on how the top two ends up finishing. One key point which is worth flagging up with Leeds especially and how their fixtures have fallen compared to Ipswich is that by the time Leeds have played QPR on the 26th of April, they'll only have one game remaining of this championship season while Ipswich will still have three games to play. And I suppose you can look on that in two separate ways really. Either that massively cranks up the pressure on Ipswich because Leeds will already have the points on the board or if Leeds do slip up in those fixtures it could give the Tractor Boys a real advantage heading into those games knowing exactly what they need to go ahead and sneak into the top two. I think in most cases you'd want to be the team that plays first in a promotion race to pile the pressure on the other side but right now with how Leeds are faltering I'm not so sure and then it's definitely worth flagging up Southampton right now. I think the vast majority of us had sort of ruled them out of the automatic promotion race on the back of their last three or so matches before that game against Coventry. they drawn against Middlesbrough, lost against Ipswich and then had another disappointing draw against Blackburn but by beating Coventry last night suddenly with how the other results unfolded they're not completely out of the race for the top two just yet. Obviously in the case of Southampton they have two games in hand on Leeds United and quite crucially they've also got games to come against Leeds and Leicester as well which if they manage to take advantage of really could narrow the gap. Now for Southampton to put themselves in a situation where they can capitalise on the other teams above them slipping up, I think at a minimum they need to win their next three matches. Uh, the next three are up against Watford, Preston and Cardiff. That's going to be easier said than done. But by taking a maximum of nine points from those matches, suddenly it sets up their final three to be really interesting where they've got games against Leicester, Stoke and Leeds United. Obviously, away form has been a bit of a frustrating one for Southampton of late, having dropped points in their last couple of away matches. But the fact that their next two games are at St. Mary's, where they'll get that chance to build a little bit of momentum, most people would probably fancy them in that game against Cardiff as well, with Cardiff no longer having anything to play for. If Southampton are within touching distance of Leicester and Leeds come the time that they play each other, those home grounds could be a bag of nerves because suddenly Southampton would be coming as more of the underdogs, I suppose, which in promotion battles, I often think ends up playing into your favour. When there's not maybe as much expectation on you, which just allows you to maybe play with that bit more fluidity and calmness, which I think probably plays into Southampton and the way they like to play football. And then the last team to discuss for today's video is obviously Ipswich Town, who are in action against Watford tonight. Now, that game against Watford won't be completely straightforward. I think that since Tom Cleverley has come in there, they've been quite a tricky customer to come up against. They've taken points off Leeds, West Brom and Preston. But with Ipswich being at Portman Road, I think most people would fancy them to just get the job done there. What we were mentioning with Ipswich before though and what makes their fixture running really quite fascinating is that after their game against Middlesbrough, which is coming up this weekend, they've got a week break, which is going to be Quite interesting to see how the results around them unfold. Because Coventry are in FA Cup action, that game has been delayed until the 30th of April. So Ipswich are going to have this massive gap between playing Middlesbrough and Hull, which 
could play into their favour in terms of getting that bit more rest for the players, getting them fresh for their final three matches. Or on the opposite side of that, how we sometimes see teams coming back from an international break and they've got that little bit of rust and they're not quite as match sharp. That could also be a factor to take into those final three matches as well. In terms of Ipswich though, they do have promotion within their own hands as of recording. If they were to win all of their remaining matches from now until the end of the season, they would be promoted. And with three of their last five Five games being at Portman Road where they've been so strong throughout the season so far. Suddenly I'm fancying them to get over the line ahead of one of Leicester or Leeds this season. But do let me know in the comments down below how are you seeing this promotion race right now and how much will last night's results go ahead and impact the league standings come the end of the season. If you did go into enjoy make sure to leave a like and do stick around for some regular championship content. Plenty more to come between now and and the end of the season. Well, apart from that, guys, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.